Hello YouTube! Okay, this is my review for Girl Meets World episode 28, Girl Meets Communism. I'm not exactly sure why the writers didn't just name the episode Girl Meets Communism, but that's beside the point. This was a good episode. In my opinion, it was not better than the previous episode, Girl Meets Money. However, I still believe the writers did a good job on this episode. So this episode wrapped around the idea of communism. Now communism is a theory of social organization based on the holding of all property in common, actual ownership being ascribed to the community as a whole or to the state. In this episode, communism was portrayed with the test and how cheating why can't everyone just work together on the same on the same test so they all get the same score and like that and so we find that Farco's wearing turtlenecks again I don't understand why the episodes aren't aired in the order they were made that would make sense and it would help the story flow better but anyway, so Maya had cheated on a test through Farkle and Riley. Well, first we just find out that it was from Farkle. Then we later find out that it was from Riley also. I liked how Riley did seem interested in communism at the first sight of it. Because it does, it does seem like it'd be good. Like, why wouldn't you want everyone to be equal? But once you look more closely at communism then you can see that it's not as good as it appears. But with communism, there's no individuality, and Riley realized that, along with Maya and then Farkle. I'm also getting the idea that Lucas may be invincible. I mean, he is portrayed as the perfect one. I mean, he's on the honor board. And he also did not fall in suit with the communism. And then in other episodes, it's like, he, it's like, he doesn't really learn much. It will, I mean, he does in some episodes, like Girl Meets Secret of Life, but like, in a lot of them, he's just like, him, what he believes. Not really, oh, I don't know. He just seems to be invincible, apparently. Anyway, I also didn't like how Zay, in the beginning of the episode where they were first doing the case, that he was being called out as the opposite of his nice family. I think Zay is a very helpful person to the others, and I don't understand why Corey called him out. I mean... Um, what was it? Like, in Girl Meets Riley, not Riley Town, Ra Ra, he, like, helped the parents discover that, oh, Riley's not in the room and everyone else thinks he is. They are. Well, I don't know if that's being nice, but it's being helpful, which is, I think, a form of being nice. So I don't understand why Corey was, like, calling him out. And I don't know. I didn't, I didn't understand that. I was also a little confused with the honor board. I mean, why wasn't Farco on the honor board? I realized he was in the case where he helped Maya cheat, but still, he is a straight-A student. I don't understand why he wasn't on the honor board. Uh, I did like what Corey did with giving everyone 100%, but he didn't give everyone A's. It showed that you can do everything you're supposed to, but if you do that, you always get a C, because that's average, and communism is about everyone being equal or average. So unless you change it up by who you are, you will never get a different grade. I like that illustration. So moving on to Augie's storyline, we finally meet Emma Weathersby. 
she and Ava did not have much screen time, but it was still nice to see both of them. You know, like after Ava and Augie were talking about Emma and how sweet she is and stuff like that. It was nice actually finally meeting her. And we got to see Augie in his school's atmosphere, which was nice to see. And when he was trying to be a lawyer like Topanga, he realized it's harder than it looks when he made a mistake and got the person he was supposed to be defending in trouble. Because the teacher didn't even know that this kid had pushed someone off the swing until Augie said it. So, it's harder being a lawyer than he thinks. It was also cute to see Augie struggling to take in his teacher's compliment about him being handsome. And then him trying to give her a compliment in return, like saying, She's pretty. Wait, no, no, no. I'm pretty? I'm gorgeous? I don't know. <laughs> That was cute. Um, I also love seeing Augie dresses to Topanga. Like when he walked through um, the last scene. Topanga not knowing how to react along with Corey. That final scene was probably the best thing in the whole episode. At least for me. I love that scene. I could watch that a thousand times. And it still probably wouldn't get old. So overall this was a good episode. If it was aired when it was made, it probably would have been better due to Fargo still being in his turtlenecks. And you could also tell Riley looked younger as well. I think even Maya looked a little bit younger. Uh, Lucas. For me, he looks pretty much the same. But the rest of them, you could tell that they looked younger. So anyway, let me know what you thought about Girl Meets Communism in the comments below. Next week's episode, Girl Meets the Bay Window, looks really good. Maya and Riley are little kids. Oh, I love that. This is so cute. Oh, I want to see more about the little Maya and Riley. And I'm so excited. And the writer said they loved the Bay Window episode the most. And now I'm really excited after seeing the promo. And as for my fan fiction videos, a lot of you keep asking if, like, everyone I post, is, if, is this the last one? I will tell you if it's the last one. And I don't plan on ending it until sometime next year. So just to let you know, don't worry about it ending soon. Anyway, see you on the next review.